Hello everyone, this is Matteo and today we are going to explore a different way of using ConfiUI. To do that, I've developed Confi Dungeon, a very simple demo that generates D&D character portraits. Let's see how it works very quickly. On the left, I have four tabs with all the options. In the first one, I can change the number of results, steps, and the overall style. I can increase the result to four and roll my new characters. And of course, I can zoom in. Since I want to iterate through a lot of options, I'm going to select a fast model that basically uses LCM. In the second tab, I can define the background and the mood of the picture. For example, I can place her on the mountains. And let's say that the mood is cunning. In the third block, I can finally describe the character uh, itself. Gender is of course a slider. I can try to make her more masculine and with bigger body structure. I also want dark blonde short hair. Let's see how the male counterpart looks like. And it's not perfect, I didn't have much time to test all the combinations and a lot of work would be needed to make it really useful, but it's still pretty fun to use. We can also try the anime version or the anime accurate one. I've also included a cinematic option, but doesn't work very well, to be honest. It's okay for humans and elves, maybe, but not so much for anything else. Anyway, the application is nothing special, but even in this state, it makes ConfUI very easy to use and accessible to anybody. And also, of course, it could be improved with IP adapter, instant ID, upscalers, detailers, and whatever comes to mind. So buckle up, because I'm going to teach you how to build an application like this. And no need to be scared, because it's actually pretty easy. Let's start by demystifying this thing. First of all, the application runs on top of ConfiUI. It's actually an extension you can install like any other. If I go to the address bar, you'd see that the URL is my ConfiUI address slash dungeon. If I remove dungeon, I get the plain old ConfiUI interface. You can go right now to my GitHub repository, download this demo, put it into the custom nodes directory and start generating DND characters. But the cool thing about Comfy Dungeon is that it doesn't need Python. You don't need to understand the ConfUI inner working. You don't need to know how to write a ConfUI extension. 99% of this application is written in JavaScript and HTML. And the actual logic is just a bunch of line of code. So now that we know that this is just a glorified interface on top of ConfUI, we can take one of the generated images and drop it into the work area to check the workflow. This is really all there is to it. If I take an image generated with a fast model, the workflow of course changes and we have a third workflow in case the user adds some custom text with an additional prompt and a conditioning concat. So we need a strategy to handle all these options. Okay, let's start from the beginning. First of all, you need to activate the developer's tools. Go in the settings and check enable dev mode. You should now have save API format in the toolbar. For this tutorial, we are going to build a very simple application that you can also use on your phone. So we start designing the base workflow. I want it to be super fast. So I'm using an SD15 checkpoint and connect it to an LCM LoRa together with all the pipelines. In the case sampler, I select eight steps, CFG 2.1, LCM sampler and SGM scheduler. Okay, looks good. This will be our base workflow. 
nothing special of course you can make it as simple or as complex as you want now i save it in api format and open it in a text editor as you can see it's nothing more than a json file if we analyze it we can easily spot all the nodes at the top of the tree we have the node id in this case is a three but could be anything uh, the class type tell us that this is the case sampler if I scroll down, I can easily spot the positive with ID 6 and the negative with ID 7. Since we are going to customize the prompt on the fly, I'll remove the text from the positive and leave an empty string. The negative for this demo will be fixed, so I just write low quality, blurry, dark, horror and naked because YouTube is so sensitive. I can save this and get back to Comfy. Now, since I might want to increase the CFG, I'll also add a rescale CFG node, connect the pipes and set the guidance scale to 2.8. Now I can use a higher CFG without burning the image too much. Let's save this for the API and open it in the text editor. If I scroll all the way down, I find a new entry with ID 11, that is our Rescale CFG node. I'm copying this node and adding it to our previous JSON file. If I save this and drop it into Comfy UI, you'll see that we indeed added the node to the workflow, but it's not actually connected to anything. This is fine because this node will be optional and we are going to switch it on and off programmatically. Okay, now I need to go to the custom nodes directory inside ConfUI. Here I'm creating a new directory that will host our demo. I'll call it fastgen, but can be whatever you want. Inside this directory, I create another one called web and this will be the root of our web app. Here I need to add one more directory called JS for the JavaScript files. Inside this folder I'm copying the workflow that we made before and rename it into something like base workflow. Now I go back to the extension root directory and create a new file called double underscore init double underscore dot pi. Remember I told you that 99% of the application is JavaScript? Uh, well, we are going now to cover that 1% of Python. So this init file is automatically called by ConfUI at startup. And we are going to use it to configure the route so that we can access the application through an easy to remember URL. I'm opening the file and pasting this code that I pre-cooked. There's really nothing special to see here. On this line, I'm setting the base URL that will be slash fastgen. And in this one, I'm setting the route for our JavaScript. And that's it. That's all the ConfUI specific code you need to know. We need one last file that is, of course, the home of our application. Inside the web folder, I'm adding an index.html file and now the structure for our app is ready. Let me open the index file and put some basic HTML in it. I'm making the background dark so the image will pop better. And inside the body, I'm adding some text to see if it's working. Okay, now I can restart Comfy and try to go to the URL that we just set up, slash fastgen and it worked great now let's make this page into an actual app i take the index html remove the title and add the text area for our prompt and an image tag for the result i give them an id so they are easy to find from javascript i'll call the text area prompt and the image main gen Okay, I'm also adding some base styles and we are ready to go. This won't win any web design competition, but it's functional. Next, JavaScript. At the bottom of the HTML, I'm including the JavaScript file and inside the JS folder, I can create a new app.js file. 
I open it in the text editor and now we need some basic functions. First of all, I create an asynchronous send box. This is needed because we are going to send requests to the ConfUI server and wait for it to reply. This is easily done by enclosing all of our code inside these two lines. Next, I need a client ID generator. This will create a unique ID so the server knows uh, who is talking to. The function is a bit cryptic, but all it does is to generate a user identifier in a format that ConfUI likes. Next, I'm using fetch to load the JSON file. Our workflow is very simple, so we could actually embed it directly into the JavaScript, but for the sake of tidiness, I'm using an external file. I can also add a console log to see if the JSON is loaded correctly. Let's go back to the browser and see if it works. Now, if I check the console, I should see the workflow converted into an object. There you go, super easy. If I click on the arrows, I can see the values. Okay, perfect, it is coming out nicely. Now we establish the connection to the WebSocket server. Fortunately, modern browsers support the WebSocket class. All we need to do is to send the client ID that we created earlier to the socket server and the connection is ready. Okay, now we need to listen to the server and check if there are any messages coming. This is done with an event listener. In the first line, we listen to the message event. The server talks in JSON, so next we convert the JSON response into an object. Then we check the type of the message that we are receiving. There are many of them, but at the moment we only care about executed, that is when the image is actually generated. Our app will only handle one image result, so I'm extracting the index zero and then storing all image data into constant for ease of access. Now I need to send this data to the HTML image tag. I'm adding a constant that stores the image element and finally updating the source property of the tag to actually display the image. To get the generated image, I'm using a ConfUI API. If I send a request to slash view with the right parameters, Confi will kindly send you back the image. The round option is just to clear up the browser cache. Okay, we are almost there. We only have to figure out a way to send the prompt to the server. For that, we need to send a post request to the web server. Super easy. I use again the fetch function, but this time I need to set the method to post because we are sending data, not receiving it. The data is called prompt, but it's actually the full workflow, not just the text prompt and then we need the client ID. Since we are dealing with super fast generations, I want to see the results as soon as I start typing. There are many ways to do that. Probably the simplest is with a timer. This code checks the text area every 500 milliseconds, and if there are changes, it sends the request to Comfy. The only thing worth noting is these two lines. This is where we update the workflow on the fly before it is executed. If I take the JSON file back, you'll see that the node ID 6 is the positive prompt and the actual value is under input text. So in the code, I first select the ID, then input and finally text. Same for the seed. This is ID 3, input seed. Let's see in the JSON what that is. 3 is our case sampler and of course seed is the seed for the random number generation. Okay, all left to do is to save and try it. Scenery of an alien planet. Okay, it works. Remember the first generation might take a few more seconds but then it will be super fast. Let's add high quality detailed or with another subject. Cyberpunk, cyborg, woman, close-up, short hair, 
Battle Angel Alita detailed high quality anime. Okay, cool. From the command line, I can see that the generation takes about 300 milliseconds. So I'm changing the timeout from 500 to 360. I could make it faster. The workflows are queued, so there's no risk of over flooding, but it wouldn't make much sense as the image would be displayed just for the fraction of a second and we wouldn't see much. One last thing, if you remember, we added the CFG rescale node that we are not currently using. So I want to add a checkbox that will trigger the CFG rescaling. In the HTML file, I just need to add the input. And in the application, I first need to select the HTML element and check the input value to toggle the CFG rescale. This time I'm changing the node ID three that we know is the case sampler. The value is the first index of the model key. Let's see what it is in the JSON file. So the case sampler is ID three. Model is an array with two values. The first one is the ID of the next node in the model pipeline. By default is 10, that is the LoRa loader, but we want to connect it to the rescale CFG, that is ID 11. So here I set that value to 11. I'm also increasing the CFG to 2.8. If the checkbox is not selected, then I set everything back to the previous values. Easy peasy. Let's give it a try. I select the rescale and type Batmobile on the streets of an old town, cobblestone, detailed, high quality cinematic. Now, since I know you want to use this on your phone in the secrecy of your room, I'm gonna tell you that if you run Comfy with Listen and enable course header options like this, you can access your app from anywhere inside your network. There are some security concerns, uh, but for home users, it's fine if the PC hosting ConfUI is not open to incoming internet connections. So let me grab my phone and see if it works. I'm activating the CFG rescale and try something like superhero, high tech, black, gold costume, detailed 4K cinematic. Well, that's it. In just 80 lines of code, we have the base for our app ready. And we didn't need any Python skill. You can check my Comfy Dungeon code to find more options and also to get some ideas for on the fly prompt engineering. I know it's not for everybody, but I believe this is how Comfy UI should be used to help less tech savvy people take advantage of the technology. Regarding Confidungeon, as I said, it's just a tech demo. The code is very messy and I apologize about that, but it wasn't really meant to be an actual full featured application. Now that I've made it though, I think that it's pretty fun to use. And if you like it, I could clean it up and improve it. I'd like, for example, to make group pictures uh, so you could create your party's uh, portraits first and then compose a group shot with all the characters. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see. Let me know what you think. Okay, then I hope you enjoyed this kind of content. As always, I'm looking forward to your feedback. That's all for today. See you next time. Ciao.